and it's one of my favourite franchises of all time. Crash Bandicoot. Or as my girlfriend's youngest daughter Amy used to call it, Cash Banuka. <laughs> A guy called Dr. Neo Cortex for his animal army. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's that guy. Mmm, hello. There's the bosses and the occasional vehicle segments. Well, pig segments. What are you going to do to that pig crash? It's all good, clean fun. This isn't, though. This will get you arrested. Fun fact. Did you know? Sonic's ass. Okay, the game was called the fucking Sonic's ass game in production because you'd be playing the quintessential ideas of a 2D game from behind the perspective of the main character who everyone knows this. Everyone's talked about it, even I talked about it on my first video on Crash Bandicoot, and then I talked about it a fucking game on Digital Gaming. So basically, you need to get off my case and get me out of this fucking well. I'm stuck. That's why there's an echo in here all the time. Help me. I'm desperate and I'm hungry for dinner. How about fish and chips? Did you also know Crash's original name was Willy Wombat? <laughs> The easier stages feel like bloody demon souls purely because of you being too scared to die, fail, screw it up, start the stage again because there's no point finishing it or maybe even finishing a stage perfectly but then missing just a couple of boxes. Oh great, is it game? Great, but I missed one box. Are you crazy? I'm just sleeping miserable bastard. And get by the eight races that you have in every single race and then after some complicated math, um, um, yes, hmm, uh, I think you get complete fucking chaos. <laughs> Ow. I have to do it again! I'm sorry, but I just don't get this. Take a character with no <clears throat> voice at all, give him a voice, and make him Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Story with full voice acting and a couple of cutscenes, apart from Crash, of course, who, if he opens his mouth, he's back! needs to be put down. And the story begins right after Crash 1, with Cortex falling from his hoverboard after Crash beats him and he falls straight into the islands from the first game. And that is, of course, assuming you actually fought him in the first game, because if you got all the gems, then you missed his boss battle and escaped with Torna without ever touching him. So I guess in that case, he just fell out of his ship one day. I don't know. And he ends up landing in a temple where crystals are buried, to which he has a realization to himself and says, Crystals. Of course. Of course what? <laughs> Well, I'm sorry that I upset you, Cortex. He needs him to get all these crystals in order to save the world from being destroyed by an old colleague of his, Brio. But you know, on the account of him stealing my girlfriend and trying to kill us multiple times in the last game, and this game being subtitled Cortex Strikes Back, I'm not even slightly trusting him and I'm just gonna do nothing. Yeah, no boxes, no bloody crystals, see how you like that, fathead! Oh, look at that, a blue gem, that's a pretty cool secret. No, 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 Crash. I said, bring me the crystals! Now, get back in there. Well, geez, sorry. But not really, I'm gonna do it all again and I'll get the crystal. <laughs> no, 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 Crash. To save the world, I need crystals. Crystals! Okay, fine. D fucking hell. Yeah. You were exploring. My only real question is where's Torna in any of these? Oh. Uh, save her life in the first game and she can't even be fucked to come back and support her boyfriend. What a cow. Mm. Well worth it. The secrets even extend to the warp room where you get rewarded with a shit ton of lives for jumping on a baby polar bear's head. I never thought animal abuse would be so encouraged on the PS1. Look here, even when running away from a bigger bear, the game still makes you kill a few of them for your selfish ends. Even to the point of them trying to save their baby that you stole from them and you responding by just dropping them down a hole like fucking Mufasa. Ah. I honestly don't get all of this polar bear torture, it's kind of horrible. Oh bloody hell, not again. What are you going to do to that bear, Crash? Oh god, no, you wouldn't. No, no, Crash, Crash, think about it. Think of the consequences, don't do it, man, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it! Oh. I still remember the day my dad ordered it through the post and I got to open it while he was at work. It made me very happy. I couldn't wish for a better introduction into the world of games when I was still very little. And also because it's just fucking awesome, alright? Alright? You alright? It's fucking awesome, you understand? You alright, Paul? Yeah. For instance, the entire intro sounds like Clancy Brown is pushing out the biggest chat, and it starts off okay at this point. A Universal Interactive Studios production. But then it starts getting painful here. Created and developed by Naughty Dog. And then it culminates into a toilet bowl explosion of biblical proportions right here. Nice bandicoot. Ooh, you might want to take some Senecot there, Mr. Brown. Warm. And now 
Chalker, every time crate and the fastest way to break them, every Aku Aku crate and where to sacrifice him for the sake of time, and even then you can only just make it by fucking milliseconds, not even joking. If these were essential, I'd say this was far too fucking difficult for anybody and I wouldn't like playing this game as much as I do, let alone for kids. But luckily it is completely optional, just sapphires will do to complete the game. But you don't really want them, look. They ugly. Go for the platinums and cry like a little bitch. Oh, and oh boy. I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty boring. There's barely any movement and you have to just sit there and watch all of the awesome villains from Crash 3 mope and whinge about how they can't beat Crash and then watch the good guys just sit around and listen to Aku Aku ramble on for minutes and minutes. Ugh, it's just nothing interesting happens, but at least you get to see all the PS2 power going into those magnificent Cortex eyebrows. They're like eagles. Fucking America! The Oh, look, we even get the floating heads taunting us like in Crash 3. This one voiced by Thomas F. Wilson, of all people. What are you looking at, fuzzhead? What are you looking at, butthead? I see what they did there! Oh, you even get an exciting badass chase sequence with a fucking dragon. <laughs> Stage 14 is another ball stage, a lot trickier than before, but still so much fun to me. There's a lot more treachery in the tighter stage design and a lot less ultra fast rolling, but getting around the different heighted hills I never found frustrating because of the awesome physics and resistance that Crash puts up when you control him in the direction you want to go. The ball did what I expected when I used the controls in a specific way. And hey, going up these tubes is always a laugh. <laughs> The only thing I don't like about this stage, and like two other ball stages in the entire game, is how depressing it is to see all of the potentially great bosses from Crash 3 go to complete waste. They only appear in these stages, and they're clearly utilised in a pathetic way to justify them being in a direct sequel to Crash 3. What the fuck, Tiny? What are you doing? This to this. This to this. This said this. I mean, you might as well have not even use them in the game at all. I don't even know what you- oh, How did you get out of that? Stage to beat him, and avoiding every different elemental attack is pretty exciting. They all do different things, and it's really cool. We need Coco here, though, for a big old Bandicoot reunion. Coco Crash and Crunch. Wait, Coco Crash Crunch sounds like a breakfast cereal. By the way, John, did you ever wonder in the original games where Crash kept all of the gems and crystals he picked up in the levels? All this time, Crash kept them in his ears, in his stomach, and up his fucking ass. Ugh, why is there a popping noise when he does that? What? Have you never pulled a gem out of a Bandicoot's rectum before? The fuck is wrong with you? I all this. Put him inside my temple prison, I sent you simple instructions to follow, but you lost the gems, you lost the crystals, and I have lost my pocket. But they, you know, added them in here. If you check the trophies for the game, you'll notice another side game called Lost Treasures with its own trophies. And I hope to God it's free DLC or something that has these levels because that'd be pretty sweet. Stormy Ascent, the beta version of Sunset Vista. Yeah, sure. I, I love getting kicked in the dick. No. They knew. They fucking knew. Okay, yeah, but now they do have the box tally, so that hidden box in the bonus stage isn't a problem anymore. I don't fucking care! What happens when you get an invincible Aku Aku state while using the monkey bars as Coco? It's one of the most hilarious fucking things you'll ever see in a platformer. This footage, by the way, is not sped up. No. Oh. You can turn off censored mode now. Motherfucker, you broke the damn thing! I only had one of those! Oh, it's not like you used it that much anyway. Not the point, c Oh, it's working again. Well, Eventually paid off in 2002 when Crash Bandicoot XS was released for my beloved Advance, and I couldn't have been a happier eight-year-old. Wait, wait, wait. Crash Bandicoot XS? Crash Bandicoot XS? It's a rhythm game! Crash Bandicoot Xylophone Saxophone! Uh, it ha Cortex, you have failed me for the final time. If you can't help me conquer the planet, then I'll inflict a thousand years of suffering upon you. But great, Uka Uka, it wasn't me, it was the infernal bandicoot. Enough excuses, you pathetic creature. But the bandicoot. Get me the gems and the crystals, and this time, no excuses. Bandicoot. bandicoot.